Well, how do there, people in the viewerverse? Tis I, Captain of the Steves, and today, chums, for you guys out there in the viewerverse, this is going to be a morning cup of tea with Captain Steve, and we're just going to talk about a little bit of news and shenanigans out there in the verse that's kind of No Man's Sky related, or games like No Man's Sky today, people, while I'm having my tea. Right, okay, well I'll set that down over there, and we'll come back to that in a moment. Now on to the important stuff, people in the viewerverse. There we go, let's jump on over and let's take a quick look at these, shall we? Right, so first of all, something that's been teased to us quite some time ago. I say quite some time ago, this was updated back in 2022, around April time. Yeah, so April 2022. Hello Games says, new project is so ambitious, it would seem impossible even with a thousand person team. Here we go. Hello Games new project will feel impossible to create even with a thousand people behind it, the developer has said. Speaking to IGN studio co-founder and managing director, Sean of the Murrays said that, while it's no sequel to No Man's Sky, the game is just ambitious. He said, for a while now, we've been working on something pretty ambitious in the background. It's a small team, but we like it that way. Similar to No Man's Sky, it's the kind of project that even if we had a thousand people working on it, it would still seem impossible. Now, No Man's Sky is very ambitious. Uh, no Man's Sky, really, really ambitious game. It's, it's a freaking universe-sized game, you know? What's more ambitious than a universe-sized game? And that makes me think, well, they've made this procedural engine and they've made a procedural universe. Are they really just going to throw that away? And what is more ambitious than a procedural generated universe? It's, it beggars belief. So if I had to try to guess what they might be working on, it'd be another procedural universe, but perhaps with more going on in it, inside of it, than No Man's Sky, maybe blending fantasy and sci-fi together. So imagine something like, I don't know, Skyrim in space or something. Space wizards! Yes, it's a little bit like Jedi's, to be fair. <laughs> Which brings us on to some later speculation about UBI Soft working on a Star Wars open universe game that takes sort of, you know, elk from No Man's Sky. But anyway, let's let's jump back in. Let's jump back in and see what else is, has to say. Because we haven't scrolled too far on this, have we? So here we go. Let's uh, scroll on down. The game was very... Okay, one second. The game was in very early development as of September last year, but Murray reassured us that while No Man's Sky is still receiving regular updates and isn't finished by a long shot, the two games aren't impacting each other's development. So, interesting. So it started of September of 2021. That's quite a long time in development. I would like to hope by 2023 we might hear something this year, people. A little bit more about this ambitious title of theirs. No Man's Sky is not being held back by the next project, but neither is the new thing being slowed by No Man's Sky, he said. We're lucky enough to be able to allow folks to move freely to work on what excites them. You see, this is another thing that makes me think that maybe it might be another procedural universe in a roundabout way. It could be that that team's working on all this other good stuff over there. Maybe they were working on procedural sort of towns or cities and thought, you know what, we could bring this into No Man's Sky and threw in settlements. You know, there's things like that that's making me think differently about what I'm seeing in No Man's Sky and thinking, is this a testbed for their new ambitious project? Which I kind of think the whole of No Man's Sky might be a testbed for their new ambitious project. The reason I say that is because, you know, there are other games that are like Joe Danger, which is a great game, but it's, it's, a, it's a massive throwaway from what No Man's Sky is and its procedural greatness, isn't it? Okay, cool. Nothing else is known about Hello Games' new project, and this would likely be the case for a while. As Murray has previously said, we have learnt our lesson on talking about games too early after No Man's Sky open and controversial pre-release. Good, okay, but at the same time, you've got to think there's some decent titles on the horizon of 2023 that could throw the gauntlet down for Hello Games to put something out there at least fairly soon. Outlaws, the latest No Man's Sky update, completely overhauled space combat and added pirates underworld to the galaxy spanning the game. 
Very nice. So you might find that Sean Murray is a little bit more tight-lipped until we see another update into the No Man's Sky verse. You can see here he often talks to places like IGN and other outlets every time there is quite a large or major release, which yes, Outlaws was probably the last one really, and, oh, and, and Endurance. I'm not really counting Waypoint. Waypoint was a bit different. But yes, we are due an update around February time. We know that with PSVR 2 is getting No Man's Sky coming to it. Will there be another update alongside that? Now, the Sentinel ship trails inside of the game files and also a solar helmet that hasn't came into play as yet. I think maybe both of those could be expedition items, but they could be update items. Who knows? But those are the only things in the game files at the moment that sort of hints that there might be something else. I mean, with the Sentinel ship trails being sentinelized and also the um, solar helmet looking very piratey with the same as the solar ships. It looks like a solar ship pilot's helmet, basically. Um, it makes me wonder whether there might be an expedition that might be outlaws and sentinel based. And so, again, combat related. But who knows? Anyway, so this is all about rumours, people, with today's cup of tea session, isn't it? So there we go. So over this way. And... Boom. Yeah, I'm going to take another little swig of this. And then we're going to be moving on to the rumour mill around good old Starfield, people in the view of us. Right, sit that there. Let's jump on over then to my Starfield stuff, people. Okay, cool, yeah. Um, and here we are. So, oh no, that's, yes, this is the Starfield rumour mill. So, listen to what Colt Eastwood has to say on the matter when it comes to Starfield. This is very interesting. And I, before I get rolling, I gotta say, um, we are in a good spot with this game, and I am hearing that Starfield from... How do I... I have to... I need to illustrate this properly, guys. I talk to people who talk to people pretty often, and when a big game's coming up, I'll hear from those people, yeah, it's, it's not the hype train we were hoping for. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, I can see this game getting like an 80 Metacritic. I hear this a lot. And then a week or two later, or months later, the game comes out, and I'm like, dang, those people were right. So this same channel of people I've talked to are saying that yeah. Starfield is bigger and more oh. ambitious than they were expecting. It, I, is, it, is, it is bigger than, than anything they did in Skyrim. It takes everything they've done in Fallout and Skyrim and, and raises it. And the feel Bro, and the I thought you were going the, the other direction. I thought you were going, oh no, I'm finally being happy about 2023. I'm talking about this Bro. game. The way you dropped that, it was so a roller coaster. I'm like, oh. No, I'm trying, I'm trying to tell <laughs> what just happened. Says, your opposite. stuff still stinks, Colt. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to explain that I've talked to these people. I've been hyped about games. I was, I was pretty hyped about Cyberpunk, and I heard from the same thing. Like, this game is going to have lots of problems before anyone else was hearing about it. And I just kept it quiet. Um, mm. So I could not believe... Starfield is going to be a banger. I expect, that's what they're saying? I expect Starfield to be a certain level of advancement beyond Fallout 4. And Fallout 4 is really great. It's not the yeah. best Fallout, but you expect them to have a certain amount of, of pushing beyond that envelope. But I'm hearing they Obviously. really nailed it. And the sense of scope... This is one of those games... That if you go into your office or wherever you work at your warehouse, the, anybody who's playing the game, that's what they're going to be talking about. Starfield is oh, supposed to be freaking gee. awesome. That's the one game. Okay, so there we go, people. A lot to take away from that. I mean, Colt Eastwood, it is just rumour. It is just rumour. He spoke to people that spoke to people, basically. And you know how these things go. It's it's never 100% a given. But at the same time, that has made me feel very invigorated and excited for Starfield. You know, I don't want to overhype it because, you know, I'm not the people that speaks to people or the people in, in question, you know? <laughs> so you're now hearing this almost like, fourth hand or something you know how chinese whispers go that's why i didn't want to just repeat what he said i wanted to actually show you a clip of what he said because i don't want it to get blown out of proportion but at the same time that's exciting stuff it doesn't matter which way you cut it that's freaking exciting stuff and uh yeah so there's that there's that people in the view of us
Now, I done a video the other day, people, about uh, the new Star Wars sort of endeavor. And a lot of the actual, when you type in UBI soft Star Wars No Man's Sky, you're going to get loads of reports coming back now. These are being pumped out almost on a day to day basis. There's my video right there. Now, the thing is, is a lot of these sort of reports and stuff, although they're saying that the game is like No Man's Sky and that they're quoting that it's, it's an open world universe, they haven't actually put the source of where that came from. Okay, so let me just hit up my video quickly so I can grab you the link to the original hey, article. Hello there, speech hello. Ewa, Let's see if I'm get it. Oh. I paused you. Voices. Dang you. Right, if we go into here and I go into the uh, the original Insider Gamer, I was rereading this the other day after I'd done my video and I was thinking to myself, hold on, hold on one second. So here we go. We got the news here. I mean, you can see who actually posted it there. The author is Grant Taylor Hill. Okay, it says it down in the bottom left corner. You don't see his name across here. You have to hover over and then it appears at the bottom there. But yeah, when you scroll on down, it says, Just under a year ago, we learned of UBI Soft's intentions to create an open world Star Wars experience like never before in January 2021. UBI Soft and Lucasfilm announced a partnership that would bring a story-driven open world adventure set in the heart of the Star Wars galaxy. However, details have been relatively thin on the ground since then, despite it seemingly being one hell of an enormous project. It's massively ambitious, and it utilizes every ounce of massive entertainment's the UBISoft's developing team. Yeah, technologi technological know-how and the Snowdrop engine that has been powered the likes of Division franchise and also the new Avatar game. And if you haven't seen the new Avatar game trailer, freaking heck, it looks amazing. But none of it was actual gameplay. Anyway, hours ago, a message was posted to Twitter by UBISoft's creative director that it may have hinted at more information being revealed soon. We'll go to that tweet in a moment. Okay. From what we already know, the UBI Soft Star Wars game will boast a fully open, seamless universe akin to that found in No Man's Sky. How? How do we already know that? Okay. I've been looking for articles since I made my video the other day. I can't find anything of UBI Soft saying that. In the game, players will be able to jump between systems, immersing themselves in a vast galaxy bustling with seams with activities. Okay, bustling at seams with activities, nice. At the heart of the game sits an in-depth, lengthy story driven by a fully customizable character that walks the path chosen by the gamer themselves. That sounds amazing. There are decades worth of lore, locations, weapons, characters for UBI soft and a massive entertainment to draw from, so the game itself should be something special. It may even rival Starfield, which is due to launch in 2023. Okay, <clears throat> when you look at this block of text, you've got some very interesting keywords in here. No Man's Sky, you've got you've got um, you know, a customizable character, you've got all sorts of, it almost feels like they're stuffing words in just to sort of get it to trend and also Starfield and 2023. I mean, if you type in UBI soft, No Man's Sky open world, get, you're going to get this article pop up, aren't you, really, with the way this has been stuffed with freaking keywords and that. Oh, here's the actual post, so I don't have to m navigate away. That's the tweet, but then they've put it down here anyway. Julian Greitley of, you know, UBI Soft and Massive Star Wars Game. They put Happy New Year to you all. 2023 is going to be huge for us. Join the adventure. Hashtag Massive Star Wars. Ah, and what they what they haven't done, though, is put the next post. Let's go over to the Twitter because this this is where it this is where it throws a bit of a curveball into the works. OK, because there was a lot of intrigue and stuff. Here's his reply. This seems to have sparked quite some interest. To be clear, I meant that 2023 will be a huge for our teams building our game, which you could be part of. For official news, keep an eye on Ubisoft. Okay, well, you can jump over to Ubisoft. You can take a look at their Snowdrop page and their actual official page. In fact, I'll put the link to their official page right here. You go over to their official website page 
And when you start looking into this, it, oh, this is all it says. UBI Soft has announced it's collaborating with Disney and Lucas Games on a new story-driven open-world video game set in the Star Wars galaxy. It doesn't mention No Man's Sky. It doesn't say seamless. It doesn't say any of that stuff that's inside of that other article. So it does make me think, well, although that they're alluding to that it might be open and massive, there's nothing really that sort of sets it apart from being a story-driven open world video game, which is still exciting, but it says open world, not open worlds or open universe or open galaxy. It just says open world. It could just be a game based on one singular freaking planet, mate. It, it might not be anything like... No Man's Sky. It could just be that this chappy over at, you know, you over at here, wherever this is, inside of gaming, this chappy, I would like to know where he got his news from, Grant Taylor Hill, because he hasn't cited anybody from UBI Soft. He hasn't said anything at all about his source or where he learnt this from. So... I, I'm, I'm, an, I'm getting a little bit more sceptical about this Star Wars game. If something sounds too good to be true, it probably is too good to be true. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I'm still very hopeful. Now, inside of my video, I do talk a little about um, how... Oh, you know what? My video is very short anyway, so let's just get past this advert, shall we, people? Sure. Let's just mute her for a second. Yeah, speech hello. It's all very, very good. It's all very wondrous and lovely. But in here I talk a little bit about um, two games that UBI Soft have already worked on. Okay, so there's there's one Starlink Battle for Atlas, which came out in 2018, and the other is still in development, which is called Beyond Good and Evil 2. Now, both of those games are seamless sort of games where you can transcend from the planet's surface up into space and then back down to another planet seamlessly, and they both have their own little mini galaxies. I would like to hope that they're going to be taking what they've already learned from these two projects and building something larger inside of a Star Wars galaxy. They've got, they've got all the tools that they need to do it. It is possible for them to do it. And let's just hope that that's what they are doing. Because at the moment, it, it's, it's very hard to say. But yeah, that was... Oh, look, I've actually finished my tea now, people. We've only got dregs left. We've got tea leaves left. There we go. Cup of tea with Steve. Yeah, I hope you found that fun and interesting. But it's just to do with rumours and the rumour mill. But what does this mean for Hello Games and uh, No Man's Sky? I would like to say that 2023 that we're in right now... Yeah, freaking heck, these years just tick by people in the universe. For Hello Games and Hello Games' studio and No Man's Sky, I think this needs to be the year that they really throw down the gauntlet. I mean, if Starfield is going to be as big as they're suggesting, and as exciting as playtesters have made out. I mean, we don't know who the playtesters are. They could be insiders. They could be people that Bethesda go to for all of their sort of refuse, just to build a bit of hype. We don't know. So, you know, but I would still say for Hello Games and Hello Games Studio, they need to do something massive with No Man's Sky. What I feel that No Man's Sky sorely needs is a reason to go back in, jump in and play after you get past the 40 hour grind that is the story and bring players back in to explore and to enhance and to build on their character and maybe a profession with inside of game. I mean, yes, you can be a pirate, but not fully. Yes, you can be an explorer, but not fully. The only thing that seems to be fully planned out now is base building base builders have got it freaking good in no man's sky i just think that hello games need to make it just as good for explorers those seeking combat those seeking a challenge yeah if they can go back to all the pillars that's um you know fight survive explore and trade trade definitely needs a little bit of work they've got all the mechanics inside of game to do so you know it's like when you use the um, conflict scanner in space you can see high conflict zones 
and you can see low conflict zones. But if you go to a high conflict zone, you see exactly what you see in a low conflict zone. They could easily adjust that. So high conflict zones, maybe you come across more crash freighters, more crash ships. It's a better system for scrapping and running contraband into. Maybe you get more money for your contraband inside high conflict zones. But there's a better chance that you're going to get intercepted by freaking pirates or sentinels, or you're going to get blown up. You know, you need to get yourself tougher if you're going into high conflict zones and you know and maybe even let it so when you pick a faction or a side you know maybe you can side with the viking or the corvax or the geck whichever you prefer and maybe having different sorts of levels with those different factions would would mean more when it comes to your trade level they've got everything they need there they've got everything inside of the game engine to just start tweaking their stuff out and fully fleshing it out and like we was reading earlier in that article, they said that, you know, No Man's Sky is not done by a long chalk and the work being done on the new project and No Man's Sky, neither is slowing. I'd like to hope that we're going to see a lot more come into No Man's Sky to bottom it out a bit. Add depth to the areas of game that we already have rather than adding more fluffy dice type things in there. Just take what we've got now add that depth, add back in replayability, and the pull to bring players back in is what I would say is what Hello Games really needs to do this year, just to add that extra sort of drive for people to go in and do more, and also to see more. So when it comes to exploration, make the planets a little bit more interesting, add in some more biomes. It's like the airless worlds, you know, in high conflict zones, add giant freaking craters, add more crashed ships, even on the airless planets and stuff. So yeah, it could be quite cool. Add actual planets that have got damage to them in high conflict zones. Heck yes, that'd be pretty darn sweet. Massive craters and stuff like I just mentioned. So there we go, people. That's my thoughts and feelings. And um, that's just sort of addressing the rumor mill on three of the titles that I'm most interested in or the studios I'm most interested in. And I hope you've enjoyed this. I, I hope to do these a little bit more often as and when I've got enough news to cram into one of these mini drinking teas with Captain Steve. Anyway, take care. Salute to Mondo. Goodbye, goodbye. And goodbye again.